Hello, how are you? Trying a new format this evening. Excuse me. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Regal, host of Fresh Oil Today TV. And I want to welcome you. I'm just going to be for real, you know. I want to do a good job, but this is a new format for me. But welcome. So glad that you're here. Today, I um, want to just share some something on my heart. I'm going to share some prophecies, and then we're going to move on from there. I, I believe the, the you know the Father has a, a word for us here, and I'm I'm pretty excited, bubbly inside, and um, I just hope and pray you all have been having a wonderfully blessed week. But I want to talk about change. The Father has been speaking about change. I'm going to share some of, of what I'm going through, my uh, some of the past, some of the present. But uh, many of us are experiencing change. Let's just have a moment of word of prayer here. Let's, let's not go any further without acknowledging our Heavenly Father. Father, we just thank you. I, I, I thank you for this opportunity to come and share your word with your people, Father. And I thank you for each person that you lead to, to this site. I thank you, Father, for each sincere, genuine, seeking heart after you. And Father, I would ask that if they get anything out of this moment of their life, of their time, that they would get you. And Father, I just ask that you would anoint me and help me. Holy Spirit, come and help me to share this word, to give this word. And let there be an impartation only from your Holy Spirit of truth. And that it will be a word from you that will be a light unto their path as they walk this journey of life back to you. And we thank you and give you the praise. We give you all the glory in the name of your Son, Yeshua. Amen. I want to read a couple of prophecies. And these prophecies are on the website, freshoilchristian.com. But it was interesting, as I was going through the prophecies today, I, I read, I just sort of string them along, and last year, around the same time, there were similar words. And I want to read them both, the one from last year, September and October, and the one from this year that was just posted, I think yesterday. And the, the Father has shown me something about seasons. That many times, you know, we want to jump ahead. We want something new. We want something fresh. But the Father has order. He has established certain law. And, and he moves within his established authority. Now, that doesn't mean that he can't do anything that he wants. But uh, he, he moves. And we have to learn how to move with him in spiritual principles that are set forth. So there are different laws, laws of nature, laws of the spirit. And many times, Yeshua, when he when he walked the earth, you know, when he taught, he would he would use earthly examples to open up the understanding of heavenly principles and truth. So let's just start here. September second, twenty twelve. Change, shift, move with Elohim. Leave behind some things, people also. Separations are needful for some of us to come into our purpose. Moses had to separate from, from his father, home, eventually even his nephew, Lot. David had to separate from Jonathan. Paul had to separate from Barnabas, even for a season. And Yeshua was also separated 
from his father. He had to leave glory to put on flesh to come for us. And he had to endure on the cross the separation further only for a time from his father. But only to fulfill his purpose. Do not fear. October 4th, 2012. This, the word the Lord wants me to give to you, I want to speak with you. Come apart and sit with me. Just you and I. October 4th, 2012. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that Elohim is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yeshua, Hamashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I hear the Holy Spirit say, extricate yourself, disentangle yourself, extricate yourself from the bondage of men walking in darkness and deception who have motives of their own. Do you not see that there are many of my people held as in the claw of a bear, and so many willfully walk in the dark, not willing to come to the light, and that light is me. Get up, arise, shake yourself. Look to me. Look to me. Now, after I posted this word, I looked the spiritual meaning up for bear. It means symbol of evil, cunning and cruel men. It also means to move slowly. Now, September 2013, this was posted yesterday. This is indeed a season of change, new. Many of us are experiencing relocating to new areas. We are even cutting ties with present people. Some people we must recognize have had their season in our lives, and they have served their purpose as it relates. Excuse me, I'm going to cut this down. As it relates to the purposes of Elohim, I will bring you into new spiritual relationships for this new season. I will also renew, refresh some, not all, relationships where the enemy has sought to sabotage. Change is touching every area of our life. Let go. I hear that we need to let go. Rest assured that Yahweh is with us. And if you have been hearing him, he has already told you. He's already prepared your heart for the coming change or change. For some of us, this change will appear as a death. Your vision may appear to have died. Your relationships with family, friends, even jobs, some careers, so much seems to be dead. Do not fear, it is change. I am bringing many of you out of your hard places. For so many have become comfortable in them. So many I am causing to enter into their season of testing and fiery trial. I am elevating some and bringing down others. Change. I am broadening your way. To some of you I say, enlarge your tent. Change. Rejoice, for I have not allowed your enemies to triumph over you, and I shall yet cause them that sought to destroy you be brought to shame. Change. Yes, change is happening, but one constant you must never forget. The Father says, I do not change. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. My word will never fail you. I am with you. I do not change, but I am moving, and you must move with me. Follow on with me. Though the sweet may turn bitter, only I am able to turn the bitter to sweet. Only I am able to give you beauty for ashes and lead you on the path that leads to life. As you follow on where I lead you, know that I am with you. Do not fear this season of change. 
Stop struggling and lean on me. Rest in me. Trust me. Have faith in me. Look to me. Look for me. This too is good. That is the words. Those are the two prophecies I want to share with you. Now, let me go a little bit more into this about change. This season, we're in a in a season, and and as I said, you know, you've heard this before. It's a cycle. I don't know if you're in tune with your own walk, uh, with your own life, but there are seasons in your life that we, you know. Just like the seasons that we see in, in the natural, in nature, we have seasons in our lives. And it's like clockwork. If we can tune in to these seasons, if you will reflect and think and consider some of your most major changes and turns and things that have happened in your life have all centered around particular times of the year. Let me read here Joel 2.23. I'm going to read it uh, in a couple of translations. King James 2000 Bible. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your Elohim. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Here's the Darby translation. And ye, children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in Jehovah your Elohim, for he giveth you the early rain in due measure. And he causeth to come down for you the rain, the early rain, and the latter rain at the beginning of the season. We are experiencing the beginning of a season. I believe it started, that's, you know, I, if you have been uh, going to the site, we had many things about the fall feast, the feast as established by Elohim. So I, I would encourage you to visit the website, freshoilchristian.com, and, and, and read about uh, the, the fall feast. This is the season that is very, very important in the life, to the life of the believer. And many things happen in this season. Joel talks about the father causing the rain to come down, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And he's talking to two seasons in the year the, of the year, the former rain and the latter rain. And I'm going to break this down a little bit more, but let me just read a little uh, thing I have here. Alluding to the two seasons of the year in which rain was given to the Jews, the former rain fell in Makshevan, which means September, and October, part of each at the seed time, and the latter is Nisan, the first month of the year, and answers to part of March and April. So you have two seasons of the rain, former and the latter rain. You had April. I'm sorry, excuse me. You have March and April, and that's the uh, the former rain. And the latter rain was through September. I'm going to break this down a little, little bit more. But we are in the season now of the latter rain. And, and we just celebrated Rosh Hashanah last week. And that is the, uh, the, the Jewish New Year. And I... I, I, I'd rather say the believer's new year because that is the new year that I owe him himself, Jehovah, established. And I, 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 I do observe that because at this season, profound change. There are two seasons, in the fall, the autumn, and in the spring, when profound things happen in the lives, spiritually, of believers. Changes center around those seasons. Joel, and the book of Joel is very, very interesting. Here, let me see if I can get all my notes together here. Joel opens up by speaking about how in 
the summer, the locusts came and just ate up everything. And now you have to remember in the summer when, when Joel was talking about the locusts in the book of Joel, prior to that in the spring, seed was sown. And so when that seed began to, to uh, produce, and the crops begin to come up, the young tender crops begin to come up. Well, in the heat of the summer, the locusts came and just devoured everything. Let me read some more things here, because see, I get excited and I don't stay on my notes. But uh, before I get into more of Joel, I want us to go to Isaiah 61 and read verse 10 through 11. And we're going to, I'm going to work through about Joel. All right, Isaiah 61, 10 through 11. I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh. My soul shall be joyful in my own him, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so Yahweh will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. And then I want to jump down. And we're going to tie all of this together. I know I'm, th this is really new and I'm, I'm working here. Just I'm, I'm pressing to follow on with the Holy Spirit with this. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. Also, the, uh, let me say it again, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vines, the labor of the olive tree shall fail, and the fields shall yield no food. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will joy in the Elohim of my salvation. Yahweh is my strength, and he will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my strength instrument. Former rain, the rain, the former and the latter rain. Now, I guess you wonder, now how does that tie in? Now, I was just talking about Joel, and all of a sudden I stopped and I jump to Isaiah and Habakkuk, but it all it's all going to tie in and we're going to see something here. Now let me go into where I started from, talking about the rain, former rain, the rain, the autumn former rain, from the middle of October to the middle of December. Joel first prophesizes in the summer when the locusts came and ate up everything, the, the, the crops that they had sown from the from the spring rain, the seeds that were sown are now coming up. They're not ready to harvest, but they're green and they're tender. And they all oh, such a promise of a wonderful harvest. But the locusts come and devour everything. But something that I've seen in Joel today, and that is that the prophet sees beyond the coming season of autumn. In other words, he, he didn't just fall out when, when, when the locusts came and ate everything up. He didn't just fall out, he looks beyond. And he sees the coming season of autumn when there's going to be a lot of rain. Now in the natural, you will say, well, well, why would you look forward? Everything's gone, they just devoured everything. But the prophet knows that the seasons of Yahweh are sure. Now, just as sure as everything is eaten up, there will come that rain, the lot of rain will still come. And without the latter rain is much needed for the soil. There's a principle for farmers. If you're a farmer, you know you need that latter rain. And it comes and it prepares. And I and I believe that some people may even sow seed even at that time. So I'm not a farmer, but I do know some of the principles here. But the prophet Joel he looks beyond to the coming season of autumn when the latter rain shall surely come. 
Now the first rain was in the spring. And it looked like, it, and everything seemed just eaten up, destroyed, taken. But the prophet looks beyond because he knows, he understands that Father is faithful. That that season, that rain will come. Another season to begin all over again. Sowing and reaping. But in between this is the bitterness of winter, death. Before one can sow again, a time of change, stillness while Yahweh works deep within, arranging us, purging us, working, illuminating, teaching, creating. Let's take it out of the natural into the spiritual. In between these two seasons, you have winter. And it's a time for the believer to be still, to be in a place where the Father can work deep within us. Especially if we've gone through what seems to be a death. Now, some of the, I'm sure the farmers, you know, the locusts didn't eat everything in the earth. Some of the farmers had a harvest. But in Joel's area, region, the locusts ate everything. But Father was faithful. The rain still came. The autumn rain still came. Some had a harvest, some did not. But all had to wait through the winter. All had to wait. And it's the same way with you and I in the spirit. In the springtime, in the seasons, when, when, when it's time for us to, to, to sow, you know, the, there comes a time where and even in your life, whatever you sow, you shall reap. It's not all set aside for judgment day. Whatever we sow, we shall reap. There are consequences to our actions. And, and, and if we're sowing, I don't care what you're sowing. You're sowing with your mouth. You're sowing worship. You're sowing praise. You're sowing money. You're sowing time. You sow good. You sow life. You sow evil. You sow death. You're going to reap that. That's what you're going to reap. And, and the Father has set the seasons and times that whatever you sow, you are going to reap. Now, did that mean that uh, in Joel's time that everything was evil? Because the locusts came and ate it up? No. You, let me tell you something. Just because something bad, or disappointing happens to you, believer, does not mean that you have disappointed the Father. Many times, it means that he can trust you and he's working to perfect something within you that he himself can come for. He's working. He's in control. He has it all. No, he's not a controller. He's not a manipulator. But as we yield, as we're pliable in his hands, all his loving hands, he will gently mold us and hold us and create to bring forth that which is of him, that which will glorify him. He'll, he'll purge us. He'll, he'll change our nature. So, so, so we have to keep that in mind. It looked like as though, you know, uh, everything was just gone, but Joel knew the seasons of the Father. You and I, again, I want to say this again, we need to know the seasons of the moving and working of the Spirit. You see, first comes the latter rain, the spring. March through April. This is the rain needed for the planting of the seed. Through the summer the seed comes up, and there comes a rain in the autumn, the former rain, in which that which is planted is harvested. However, let me say again, in the summer, the locusts came and ate, devoured all the plantings before they were ready. Joel 1 4 reads. Joel 1 4. That which the cutting locust has left, has the swarming locust eaten. And that which the swarming locust has left has the crawling locust eaten. And that which the crawling locust has left has the consuming locust eaten. They ate everything. It wasn't just one locust. They just came and devoured clean. Fields were gone. Crops were gone. But the prophet looked to the season of the father. He was confident that another rain would come. 
Now, I know that sometimes people can even plant. You can try, you know, planting again. I, I remember gardens as a young girl. You can, you can plant this, what they call late summer fruit. You know, you, you or vegetables. You plant it's late. And there is an opportunity to still have and harvest. There's an opportunity to still have a harvest. It may be a late planting, but there's still the opportunity to try all over again. Yahweh promised that he will provide and he will restore all that the locust has eaten in your life and in my life. I tell you, many people are experiencing change. I myself, I'm experiencing change. I'm having to uh, uh, release people in my life. People who have been in my life, not necessarily uh, evil or anything like that, but seasons. People are in our lives for seasons. And, and, and just read that prophecy again, because there are relationships and things that have gone on. Well, the enemy has attempted to, to sabotage relationships. But the Father is moving, and we have to move with him. Change. Joel 2.25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, and the consuming locust, and the cutting locust, my great army which I sent among you. Did I not make reference earlier? Doesn't mean that be, you know because your vision or or it looks like you're tall and you've been working to build something or, or, or sewing up. You don't see any souls. You don't see any, any uh, people. You don't see any fruit of your efforts. But even as we read further here with Joel, the Father sent the locusts. He called them his army. So when you're going through things, it looks like loss. You're doing the best you can. And, 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 and still, it's not yielding anything. Don't give up. Look to the Father and be confident that another season, that another rain is coming. And you will have that opportunity to do change. Be encouraged and be expectant. You got to be expecting. You got to be looking. You got to be confident that the former rain, if you missed it in, in the spring, Another rain is coming. You might have to plant a late harvest, but it's coming. And you can still have a harvest. You may have to plant late. But see, the Father is so merciful and so long-suffering and so patient with us. So don't give up. Don't give up. Be encouraged and be expected. Wait for the latter and the former rain. This season is so very important because change happens in these seasons. Either during one of these two seasons, the spirit of Yahweh moves. Either one, the latter or the former, the spirit of Yahweh moves. And we will reap our harvest. Whatever we sow, we shall reap. Reaping and sowing seasons are seasons of change. Let me read this here, but let us rejoice and not get too heady over the seedlings we see coming up. Now you you know you you might see some seedlings coming up. You've got some things coming up. You you know you're gonna have a harvest. But let's not get too far over it in this thing here. I'm going to read Isaiah 61 again. Now this is why you should not get too heady. When you know when, when your, your ministry begins to grow, don't get too 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 glad when things begin to happen or see because see these are the things that you're praying for. Yes, we rejoice in that. But you remember Yeshua said um, to uh, the disciples he said, don't, don't rejoice because demons are subject to you, but rejoice rather that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. See, sometimes we rejoice over the wrong things that are not, you know, Father wants us to rejoice over him. 
because he's the one that's doing the work. <laughs> you know, we're working with him, but he's the one that's doing the work through us. Just as the Father was within Yeshua, reconciling the world unto himself. But let's be careful. I'm going to read Isaiah 61, 10 through 11 again. I read it earlier. I'm going to read it again. I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh. My soul shall be joyful in Elohim. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so Yahweh will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. That righteousness and that praise, my dear, that the nations will see will be his people. That will be you and I. And that is what we are to rejoice in. All the works will be tried. All the buildings will, you know, just die. Just everything in this earth is temporal. It's not eternal. But this is the joy that we're to rejoice in. When we begin to see a heart, when we begin to see that which we have worked and sown so hard, Forming is hard work. Laborers. That's why Yeshua said, he didn't say pray for the harvest. People are going around praying for the harvest. Oh, pray for the harvest. No, he said pray for the laborers. The harvest is great. The harvest is here. But we need laborers to go forth to reap the harvest of souls. Habakkuk 3.17, 19 says, Although, not, now that was for, you know, you all who are seeing some, you know, you're now, your, your ministry, things are beginning to take off for you. Don't rejoice in it. You, you rejoice, you read Isaiah 61, 10 through 11 again. Now, for some of us who are, maybe the locust has eaten everything. We don't see anything. There's no seedlings coming up or anything. Well, Habakkuk 3, 17 says this, although the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be on the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no food. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stone. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will joy in the Elohim of my salvation. Yahweh is my strength, and he will make my feet like Deer's feet, and he will make me walk upon my high place to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. You may not see any. Seems like you've been falling and still don't see any fruit. But you rejoice. You rejoice. You rejoice, for he shall make your feet like high feet and cause you to get up into your high places. That means. To get up into your high place. Stop looking at the earthly. Get out of your soul. And get into your spirit. Man. And begin to fellowship. Be time. And worship. Your God. Hello man. Worship. I want to read this. Joel 2, 26, 32. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of Yahweh your Elohim, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now listen, this is, this is for you. This is your word. It's, I don't care where you are, what's going on, reaping or not reaping, the locusts eating everything up, your you know, ministry or whatever is beginning to bud your life, things you've been waiting on. You're finally getting a breakthrough. You're entering into your jubilee. Awesome. But listen. Elohim, who has dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am 
in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your Elohim, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the great and the terrible day of Yahweh comes. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered, as Yahweh has said, and in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. That is a promise. That is what we should be looking forward to. The great day of Yahweh. The great day. All of these things that are going on are preparing us to be a part of that remnant of the people of Yahweh in the earth. I hope this has blessed you. I don't know how good my delivery was or not, but we'll trust and put everything in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Let me have just a word of prayer with you. Father, I thank you for each and every one. I thank you for every person that will view and listen to this video. I thank you that you will cause myself to to just disappear and that they hear the, your spirit, that they hear what you are saying in this message. I thank you that we're to be confident in you. Doesn't matter where we are, you have us. We're in your hand. You hold us in the palm of your hand. Teach us to be wise children. Teach us to be good stewards. Teach us, Father, that we may grow and be mature mothers and fathers to help and teach us how to, 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 to follow you, to move with you. Give us understanding in your way. And we just thank you. We thank you, Father. That no matter whether we're on the reaping end or we're looking to sow or some are still, you know, trying to get in something before the winter comes. Father, it is all in your hand. We are confident in your season. And we look beyond the natural, as that is an example of the natural, of the season and the time in the spirit. I ask that you would uh, instruct each person that is listening, that you will cause them to understand the season in their own life, and that they may look forward and look to you with great expectation. For you and you alone are faithful. We thank you. This we pray in the name of Yeshua. I love you and Look forward to seeing you again next week. Bless you. And don't forget to visit the website, freshoilchristian.com. All right. Be blessed. Bye now. Still trying to learn how to operate this.